Hi, my name is Michael and I want to show you my new plugin called TP Pasio or Pazio, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, it's still in development, so there may be a few bugs here and there, but I still think it's ready to be shown and I think it's, it has quite a, nice, uh, quite a few nice features that uh, a lot of people who have been working with uh, thinking particles have been missing in cinema so far. Um, so basically what it is, it's a um, particle cacher, so you can cache your particles onto disk, uh, read them back, read them back in reverse order, uh, read them back in a different software, import and export them in different uh, formats, you, uh, take snapshots so you can start your simulations uh, s uh, from some point later in your sim. So let's say you have simulated 100 frames already, you like that state. And you don't want to start from scratch every every time. You can just say, okay, this frame 100 will now be my first frame. All that kind of stuff you can do with this. Um, but I think the best thing would be to just show you an uh, example uh, how you would work with this. So uh, I have here this small uh, sample file, which has a very simple uh, thinking particle setup here, which is just going to emit a few particles from a sphere. And they are going to be uh, well turbulenced around a bit. So this is what it's going to look like. Oh, sorry, I think I haven't turned it on. Nope. So there you go. So you see, there's just a few particles coming out there, um, being emitted from that sphere, and then they run into that turbulence node here, and this is what it looks like. And you can of course render this with the hair renderer, and it looks quite nice. So a big problem with this kind of simulation now is that once you're here and you want to go back, you can't really, because if you go back, it won't simulate. And if you go forward, it just continues to simulate from that point on. And it's total chaos. And if you go back to zero, all your particles are gone. So whenever you are back here and you want to go back to, let's say, frame 80, you have to go to the zero and simulate through again to frame 80, which is very annoying. So... What we are going to do instead is we're going to cache all the particles that are being created here and then you can just go uh, go and scrub through your timeline and jump to wherever you are. And we are going to do this with this small plugin here. And it has a, quite a few settings. Uh, the most important being this file name setting here, which will let you choose where to store your particles. The base name uh, for your particles. So this is this part here and the amount of digits you want to have for the numbering. Five digit digits uh, should be enough for, well, most anything really. I don't think you probably are not going to have more than 999,000 uh, frames. And um, yeah, so I've preset this now with my temp directory and the name particle set. And actually, let's call it something different because I have tested this before and I want to start from scratch, so let's call it uh, test. Oops. So it's particle set test now. And then we can choose where which particles to take. So we are going to take these ones here, the source ones. These are the ones that I emit into. So we're reading these. And these are the options. So you can just write a single frame, you can write the whole timeline, just a region which is being set here, or a snapshot, which would mean I simulate to 100, click here, and we'll store frame 100 as frame 0, and we go from there. Actually, let's try this. So, let's say we like this one here as our starting point, and I say wide snapshot. And with a bit of luck, this has worked now. So then you go back to read, and our input will be this one here. So let's go back to frame 0. Read that frame, and there we go. There are our particles. So you can see the difference here. The, the green, the, uh, green ones are the ones coming from disk now. So, and we have not just stored the position, we have stored all these attributes here. So if you look at those, uh, most important at this point being the velocity, but also life, age, mass, size, all that kind of stuff. So if I were to play, I press play now, and actually, just to show you a bit more, let's turn off the uh, thinking particles here. So if I press play, this simulation will just continue from frame 100 where we started before. So if we go back to frame zero and reload that frame again, 
we can repeat that step. So, of course, this is just a single frame, so we can't uh, really simulate, uh, we can't scrub with that one, because we only have that frame zero. So what's even nicer is if we store the entire sequence. So let's turn on the source particles again. Go to TP partial. Let's test that it's working. Yep, it's emitting. So let's say we write all of them. So this is going to, through the entire timeline and uh, you can already see that the frames per second are dropping quite significantly, really quick. And uh, we're not even at 100,000 particles yet and already we have dropped to uh, almost below 4 frames per second. And this is a really quite a recent MacBook Pro, so it's not slow. But um, yeah, you can see this is getting slower and slower and I probably am going to skip this part and we'll be back to you once we have cached it completely. <coughs> So we've already almost made it through and you can see um, frames have dropped to well, 1.6, 1.5 frames per second, very, very slow. Uh, and now we're done. So what we have now is we have, let me just show this to you. We have um, these kind of files now. Uh, I chose the BGO format, which is the Houdini or the old Houdini format. They're now using, now using a new one. But uh, you can also choose a PRT format, with, which is the one uh, that uh, they use for Krakatoa, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and the regular Geo format, which is uh, not binary, but text. And there's a few other formats available. But uh, I usually do use the BGO or the PRT ones, for, because they have the best well, size-to-speed ratio, really. So you can see here we, we ended up with about 300,000 particles and those are, um, let's see, almost around 20 megabytes per file. So you've got, you get one file per frame. Right, so let's start and use those. So again, I'm going to turn off the simulation itself. So we should end up with, a, yep, no particles at all, none of them left. Go back to TP Power Show. And again, we should be able to just jump to a random position, say read, and there we go, there we are. And again, they have stored the position and we can simulate from there. But the more interesting part is, of course, if we start to auto read. So now we can just scrub through the entire simulation, go back and forth, and go to any position we like. And if I play this now, I'll jump. To the end here. Well, it's it's faster, definitely. It's well, you can't see it because of particles here, but it's about three to four frames now instead of one point five. Plus, it should be a bit faster than the next time you play through because the system is caching the files. However, once you start dealing with uh, let's say a million particles, Cinema is getting really, really slow at uh, uh, displaying all these particles. And for the most part, you don't really need that density until you start to render. So what you can do is you can just start reducing the resolution. So let's just say we reduce it by 10. You can increase this even further, but I chose just 10 now. And now let's see. There we go. Now we get uh, 12 frames. And if we increase it even further. Well, I think I've overdone it now. Right, <laughs> I broke it. So actually, I don't want to hide this. Like I said, it's still version 0 0.13, so it's far from ver version uh, 1.0, but well, let's just quickly start this again. Save this. Good. Okay, so we are back, and uh, you can see it's working. You can go back and forth, you know, and if you have like a million of those here and they're going really slow you can just go into the read settings and just reduce the resolution and you will see less of them and uh, yeah of course you can still render this just as normal and something that's also quite nice is you can read those files in in reverse or store them in reverse depending on what you what you prefer so what would then happen is you start at the end and then go to the beginning uh, based on this uh, document length. 
So actually, let's have a quick look what that would look like if we render it. Yeah, we don't want to save it, we just want to look at it. So let's get this picture viewer here. Yeah, see, so this is now shrinking and it's really nice if you want to get um, um, create some sort of organic assembly effect. So instead of blowing stuff up, you can just create stuff this way. And it can have, it can look really, really nice. Uh, also, of course, you have to remember that you can um, add a cloner to all these particles here. So if you just the particle group as the source for a cloner or matrix object, you can you can do even further stuff with the thermograph stuff and all that. So, well, we don't want to wait for this to finish now, but uh, yeah, I think you can see the principle here. So. Again, there are still a, a number of bugs in here, but the basic stuff works. You see here it's now reduced, and if I reduce this further, see, it's now much more fluid. And then there are a number of formats available. As I said, BGO is my favorite one, BGO and PRT, uh, those two. But bin might be interesting as well. That's the uh, real flow one. The other ones are a bit more exotic, and that's basically what the Pasio library is uh, supporting. Uh, that's being created by Disney, so all credits go to those to them for that. Uh, and you may want to check that out as well if you are interested into uh, in, in this kind of stuff. But um, yeah, well, for for cinema, you probably want to stick with BGO, GEO, and PRT. And something else we may want to try, and I'm not sure if it's going to work, sometimes it's behaving a bit erratic, but generally you should be able to just open these files in Houdini. So let's see if the viewer is liking them. For some reason it has been crashing on me for a number of times. And uh, let's see. Spinning ball. Oh, there we go. It's on the other screen. All right. So there we have our particles. See, that's frame one. Uh, I think it didn't. No, it didn't import the sequence. So try that. Uh, not this one. It's this one. Okay, and there we have our sequence. And just like in cinema, you can go back and forth through that sequence. And rotate it around. Import that into Houdini, uh, do some stuff with it, export it back into BGO, into the old format, obviously, because the new one we can't deal with yet. And uh, yeah, get it back into cinema. And um, the same, not just with, with the Dini, you can do that with Wheelflow, with uh, Maya probably, uh, with Krakatoa, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I hope this, go this is going to be useful for you guys. Uh, I am going to release this for free for now because, um, well, like I said, it's still in early development. I would really love to get some feedback. And uh, if you find that it's actually saving you some time and if you're going to use it in production, it would be really nice if you're supporting me in my development uh, but generally yeah keep feel free to use it and to play around and i would really love to he uh, hear about, uh, from you and see what you've done with it okie doke uh, fun with it and uh, bye